Hello everyone, this is CryptoPump, and today I will tell you how to use Dex Screener. In this video, we will take a detailed look at Dex Screener, an excellent tool that helps find promising tokens on decentralized exchanges. I will guide you through all the sections of the platform, from the homepage to the finer details, so you can easily find tokens, analyze information, and select projects with potential. We will move step by step, so even those just starting out can easily understand the functionality. To keep you updated with the latest news and useful market tips, be sure to check out our Telegram channel. There I share unique insights that will help you catch important moments. The link is in the description, and now let's get to our main content. Every day, I track tokens, and Dex Screener is a great help. It's a web service that I use on both my phone and computer. It provides information about current projects and what to pay attention to. I started with Ethereum, where fees were high but competition among bots was low, and then I switched to Solana. There's certainly a lot of fraud, but also countless opportunities. Want to figure out how it all works? Let's open Dex Screener together and see what interesting things it has to offer. The first thing you'll see is the homepage. Right at the top, under the logo, there's a large number, the total trading volume for the day. This number acts like a thermometer, indicating how active the market is. If it increases by, say, 20% compared to the previous day, it signifies that people are actively trading and there's potential for growth. Conversely, if the number decreases, it's a sign of quietness. I usually wait for activity to resume. A little to the right, you'll see tabs with the names of blockchains. Ethereum, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, and others. It's like a switch. I select, for example, Solana, click it, and the list of tokens refreshes, showing only projects from that network. You can also choose the network that interests you and continue from there. Now, let's scroll down a bit. Here, you'll find the filters. They help narrow down the options and keep only what we really need. The first button is last 24 hours. I click it, and the service shows tokens that were added in the last day. Next, I set the parameters. I set the trading volume to at least $1 million. This means there's already money in the token and it's not dead. I choose liquidity to be at least $50,000. This ensures that the token won't drop from the first sale. I also set the age to 24 hours. Fresh projects are often the most interesting. Then, I sort by dynamics over five minutes to see what's happening right now. When everything is set up, I click apply and the list of tokens refreshes. Now it only includes those that meet my criteria and I can choose which ones to work with. Let's take a close look at this list. It's divided into columns, each with its own significance. The first column shows the price of the token in dollars, indicating its current value. The second column is the trading volume, which tells how much money has flowed through the token in the last 24 hours. The fourth column indicates the age of the token, showing how many hours or days it has existed. Now I click on the token and its page opens up. On the left, you'll see a large chart. This is the heart of the token, showing what's happening with it. Above the chart are buttons to select the time frame: One second, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, and one hour. I set it to 5 minutes. It's more convenient for tracking movement. The chart displays candles, green, when the price rises, and red, when it falls. Each candle represents 5 minutes of the token's existence. Next to the time frame selection, you can choose the chart type, line, candlestick, or area. I prefer candlesticks. They are more informative and visually clear. Further to the right is a switch for price or market capitalization. I select market capitalization. This allows me to see how significant the token is, rather than just its dollar value. To the left of the chart is a toolbar. Here you can draw and make various annotations. I click on the line. This is a trend line which helps to understand the direction of the price movement. I can also choose the Fibonacci tool. I set levels where the price might stop or reverse. There's also a button for percentages, showing how much the token has increased or decreased over the selected period. At the bottom of the chart, there's a timeline running from left to right, allowing you to see how changes occurred. On the right, there's a value scale that depends on whether you've selected price or market capitalization. Now let's focus on the right side of the chart. Here you'll see the token ticker. Just below, there are links to social media, the official website, Twitter, and Telegram. I always check these links to verify the authenticity of the token. If the links are missing or look suspicious, it could be a sign of fraud, and I prefer to steer clear of such projects. Let's move down from the chart. Here you'll find the token parameters. The first line shows the price in dollars, indicating its current value. The second line displays liquidity, which represents the real money circulating. The third line indicates market capitalization, the total value of all tokens. The fourth line shows the price dynamics for one hour, six hours, or 24 hours. I prefer to look at the daily change to assess the overall trend. The fifth line reveals the number of buys and sells for the day. The sixth line shows the trading volume in dollars. I pay attention to ensure that liquidity is at least a third of the capitalization. If there are more buys than sells, that's also a good sign. It means the token is in demand. Now let's move on to the tabs under the chart. The first one is transactions. I open it and information appears. The first column shows the time of the last transaction. The second column indicates the type of transaction, buy or sell. The third column displays the amount in dollars spent on the transaction. The fourth shows the number of tokens that were bought or sold. The fifth column indicates the transaction price. The sixth column shows the wallet from which the operation was made. Buys are marked in green while sells are in red. I click on the wallet and a window appears on the right with its details how many tokens it has bought, how many it has sold, and what the remaining balance is. This helps to understand who is trading and how they are doing it. The next tab is holders. It shows the number of people who own the token. If there are thousands of them, that's normal, but if one wallet controls nearly the entire supply, 
that raises my suspicions. The third tab is the bubble map. It illustrates the network of connections between wallets. I check it for any suspicious activity. And finally, at the very bottom of the page, you'll find the token creation date, for example, eight hours ago. Next to it is the contract address, something like 7i PDW. I copy this address and verify it with the official token website. This helps to avoid scams. There's an arrow to the right, I click on it, and I'm redirected to Solscan, where I can see the full history of the token. Friends, now you know how to use Dex Screener step by step. Want more tips and ideas? Check out our Telegram channel and trading chat. There you'll find fresh and relevant information. The link is in the description, don't miss out. Thank you for being with us. Subscribe to CryptoPump, give us a like, and don't forget to hit the bell. See you in the next video.